You're listening to Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon. Hey, what's up, Internet? This is Brandon. And this is Alex. And this is Greg. And we're filmmakers. And we're also drinking bourbon. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to that. Or a bourbon mixture, you could say. All right. So, Alex, uh, this is kind of a different setting from Studio B at Sound Images. You could say so. It probably sounds different, too. It sounds like it's live. It might actually be live. It feels live. Actually, I'm just going to say We're live. We are live (laughs) here at the... Horse and Barrel. Horse and Barrel. Event Center here Walnut in Walnut Street in Cincinnati, Cincinnati Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. And the third voice you heard in the intro was Mr. Greg Lehman. Exactly. Tell how us a little you, about yourself. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. It's great to be here. Um, I am a distiller. I'm up in Columbus, Ohio, and really excited to be down here in Cincinnati drinking some of our old fashioned. So we are drinking bourbon mixed now, in this old fashioned. Now, wait a second. It's fantastic. We're drinking an old-fashioned, but when I went to the bar tonight, I did not see bitters. Nobody had I did to not see anything. a song and dance with the bartender. Nobody was doing the cocktail Tom Cruise thing. I did not see any shakers. What in the world? How did this happen? This place is magic. There's magic <laughs> yeah. behind the bar. There uh, is an orange peel in it, though. There is an orange peel. That's fancy. We got fancy. So how did so, you get this old-fashioned in that bottle? We've uh, been making bourbon for a while, and we kind of got halfway through this year, and we were tasting our bourbon and drinking it and talking about the holidays and what we like to take to a party, and it was one of those moments where it's hard to take a bottle of our booze to the party without taking some mixers. Nobody wants a bottle of gin at 88 proof uh, without, without a mixer in there, without a cocktail. Hey, some people do. Hey, I, I don't judge. I just distill it. I don't judge. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, bourbon is a little bit different. Many people drink bourbon on ice, but we got this idea. Let's make a cocktail that is perfectly balanced. You don't have to worry about it. Just pour it on ice. If you want to get fancy, do what we did tonight. Put an in, orange peel in there. And so we, we thought, let's try to do this. Uh, let's make it at the distillery. Let's get some bitters, some bourbon, a little bit of sweet uh, sugar in there, some Ohio cherry juice, and let's balance it just right. So let's, let's stop there for a minute. So a lot of people think that the old-fashioned uh, has to have the cherry, has to have the oranges, etc. But doesn't the old-fashioned, doesn't it root back to back in the day, it was like a medicinal recipe, and really it's just... It's a little more simple. It's like, it's the bitters? T- talk about a little bit of what you know about the history bitters, of the old-fashioned. Bitters is, well, you'll soon see that I'm not a history buff, um, <laughs> but I can make good spirits. I can't talk about the history, but what, what I understand is exact, you're exactly right, and The bitters, the bourbon, that's what it was all about. And really, I feel like a lot of the spirits we drink today have some kind of medicinal mythology behind it where, hey, drink this, it'll cure up your cold, make you feel better. Um, And so what really for us, the bitters that we use, we use orange bitters in there. That's where you get that orange flavor that's coming through. Um, The cherry side for us was we're really trying to make an effort what we make, we want to come from Ohio. We grow great fruit here. We grow great grains. Look at our products that we have back here. Corn, wheat, uh, rye, um, the apples. So we're using apples in some the of our walnuts. products yeah. now. Uh, that's walnuts beautiful. and now cherries yeah. in this product. So and I this, think that's part of it. And this podcast is from Ohio. It, yeah, this it podcast is, is from Ohio. <laughs> Everything here these today is from people are from Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So, so you have all of these ingredients. How does one... Batch them together, I guess. Because so, to make an old-fashioned, you're doing it in one glass. It's but to do it in a vat... Thousands I guess, of shakers, Brandon. Is there thousands a vat? Of shakers. Is there a vat? There is a vat. And actually, I'm going to share a story that nobody outside of Watershed knows about. So when you batch these cocktails, um, yeah, there's a huge vat. We make a huge... I say a huge vat. It's probably 900 gallons. Is that swimmable? It's swimmable. I don't recommend it. Not recommend like it. Treading, <laughs> treading or you like laps? You might soil the bourbon. Can you do laps? You might soil the bourbon. Don't or do, just you, tread water. No, you could tread water. Tread bourbon. Tread, 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 tread bourbon. bourbon. You could tread That's bourbon. That's what we're doing right now. That could be a dream. <laughs> so anyway, this story that I'm going to share, um, when we started the distillery, we've done a lot of things right along the way. It seems like we've done a lot of wrong things also. And so we made our first batch of Old Fashioned, surprisingly, with no hitches. Um, we've been selling it crazy fast. Yesterday, we were making our second batch of Old Fashioned. Now, the bitter side of it is um, you add quite a bit of bitters to it. 
and we had the bitters all prepped, ready to go. And the rest of the old fashioned is still sitting, ready to go, because the bitters somehow ended up. There was a, a pallet jack accident, and the bitters were spilled all over no. Watershed Distillery, all over the floor. It's a Sticky nightmare. mess, nightmare. So, needless um, to say, as the distiller, you were a little bitter. I was very oh. bitter. <laughs> we'll be here all night. We'll be here all night, everyone. <laughs> So, um, a little setback. So, there might be a rush on the old-fashioned now that this story's out. Uh, nice. No, I assure you, we will get more out to the stores. It'll be there. Um, but, yeah, we make, we make about 600 gallons at a time. So, we dump quite a few bourbon barrels That's and a lot. Um, a, lot of sit, uh, a lot of simple syrup, a lot of old-fashioned, a lot of cherry juice. That's and put it all together. fantastic. So, the first thing I noticed when I tasted this was that it's not too sweet. And I feel like that's so easy to do with a bottled mixed drink is just go sweet. It's applicable, you know. It's You're absolutely to right, and it, it, it was almost too sweet. I'll be honest. When we made it, um, we mixed up, and, and you're taking one sip when you're tasting these different recipes because you're trying to taste a lot of recipes, and we don't want to be wasted by noon. So we're just taking one sip as we're making this, and what we found out was we had this perfect old-fashioned, we thought. And then so one day after we were getting ready to make the full batch, and I happened to be at Watershed a little late, and I poured myself a whole old-fashioned, uh, don't tell my business partner, and um, as I'm sitting there drinking it, about halfway through, I was like, wow, this is just way too sweet. Like, I don't even know if I could finish this one, and so I adjusted the recipe a little bit with a lot less sugar, and then I even went down from there, and pretty soon, I was like, at the end of that glass, I'm like, I want another glass, <laughs> and so when he came in the next day, I was like, hey, you got to try this. You got to drink a whole old-fashioned. And he's like, whoa, dude, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. What are you talking it's about? It's testing. I, it's I, love, I love the, the visual here. I, I picture you, like, stumbling around as you say, so I adjusted it. <laughs> you're, like, turning knobs? Like, what are you doing? I like, mix another cocktail. You're, a pinch adjusted. here, a pinch there. Adjusted is technical term for Adju I shook another I cocktail. It. Or stirred another cocktail. So um, after adjusting, after some careful adjusting... <laughs> The next morning, I convinced Dave we had to sit down and drink a few old fashions before lunch. Yeah. And it was crazy. Night and day, he saw the same thing I did. And so we quickly rewrote the recipe. And um, it's, it's crazy. It never scales up. When you're making one and you try to make 700 gallons, it never scales a up little the correct different. way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a little tweaking when we, when we grow the recipe. But um, we're really happy that we adjusted. It's fantastic. Wow, I do good. have to say, so, yeah, congrats. This is yeah. a great drink. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I hope yeah. you're I enjoying it out there. Empty. Yeah, it's good. So, uh, so here's, a, here's a question. You can't make the old-fashioned without bourbon. Right. So let's hear a little bit about the watershed story. How did you guys get into the spirit game? Was it bourbon, or did you guys start, you guys offer a gin, you have some other, you have a bourbon barrel gin? Talk a little bit about where did this happen? Where did it start? Right, we always joke that... Um, the vodka and the gin we made to support our bourbon habit. Uh, we were both <laughs> like bourbon it. drinkers. And really, I would, I would have called myself a bourbon and a gin drinker when we started this. And we both worked for corporate America and really wanted to be involved somehow in the local scene, somehow in the Ohio community. We love the restaurant industry. We were scared to death of starting a restaurant. Um, we kind of had this entrepreneurial itch. And um, when we came up with this idea to distill... Uh, really inspired by the brewing industry and the restaurant industry together, um, we, we started asking around. We asked our friends, hey, if we made gin here in Columbus, Ohio, would you guys drink it? And, you know, they had that look on their face like, of course, if it tastes good, I mean, I'm going to try it. If it tastes good, I'll drink it. And so um, we, we didn't have any money and we didn't know how to make gin. Um, but the overwhelming response was we should do this. So we really started looking into it. And it sounds when I say that like we were some crazy risk takers. We weren't. Um, we really did a lot of, a ton of research. And we wrote this business plan. And we had our full-time jobs this whole time. And I always say it was this fun little hobby. We were doing this hobby, writing this business plan, visiting distilleries, learning how to distill. And then we decided, you know what? We got a good business plan put together. We should try to raise some money. If it takes a couple years, in a couple years, maybe we'll follow this dream and start a business. Well, two months after we started, two months after that conversation, we had the money in the bank to start this thing. Wow. And then it got scary. You, I mean, everyone's like, oh, cool, you can do it. I'm like, no, it got scary at that now point. Now you have to do it. It was real. Now we have to do it. It wasn't this fun thing. It was me looking at my business partner in the eye going, are you really going to leave your job? 
who's going first? Are you going first? Am right. I going first? Like, this no is scary. Back. Yeah. Right. And so um, it obviously worked out well. We both left our jobs. Uh, we started making, we started with vodka, gin, and bourbon. We didn't sell bourbon. It was sitting in barrels. My business partner was convinced if we shook the barrels every day, it would age a little faster. So back at the beginning, <laughs> back at the beginning, science he would, supports that. yes, yeah. it does. It does. Look it up. Google it. Um, he would shake the barrels every day and I would kind of chuckle. Um, back then, it feels like we had a lot more time on our hands. Um, but it took a couple years and we finally launched the bourbon into the marketplace as well. Somewhere along the way, we had this great idea to put gin in a bourbon barrel. That product is phenomenal. Um, and then, it just won some, uh, some accolades, did it not? It did. It did. I should, I should brag a little you bit should. about Go it. You should. Go ahead. Is this, the, <laughs> please, is this the time? No, please It's brag. okay to brag. All right. <laughs> so it's worth it. We entered this competition right when we first started, and we paid a lot of money to enter the spirits competition, and we put our four-peel gin in there, our original gin, and it won an award, and we did some research, and everything that entered the competition won an award, and we were like, well, that's kind of BS. Um, and then we were like, well, we'll tell people about it. It's a cool award. And so we went to tell people about it, and the competition contacted us and said, no, you, you got to pay a lot more money if you want to tell people and advertise the award. And we we're like, all right, this is bullshit. We're not doing this. So we decided at that point we're not entering any more competitions. But it turns out Wine Enthusiast magazine, if it's you... It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. is. It, it really is. is. Yeah. So if you send them a bottle of your spirit, they will rank it and publish it in the magazine. Kind of cool, a little bit scary, but at least it's legit. So if it's terrible, just don't tell anybody about it. Hopefully no one reads Wine Enthusiast. So, so you guys went in blind like... We went in blind. It is what like, it is. Like, here's our 4 PL gin. Honest Try it. Good or bad. Yeah. So Could ruin your career. It could, it could be it. That could be it. Uh, 72 and we're done, right? <laughs> Never been seen before. So our 4 PL gin, we sent it in. It got a 92 and we were wow. floored. We were like, that's crazy. That's awesome. That's like an A, right? That's an A. That is an A. That's good. It's we, over the mark. We're graduating. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so then Bourbon Barrel Gin comes along a little bit later, and we think this is, this is an amazing product. Let's send it to Wine Enthusiast. We send it in. They give it a 94, and they rank it as their favorite American-style gin in 2014. That's amazing. And wow. we're like, this is That is crazy. awesome. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Let them hear it. That's great stuff. So at that time, there were four of us at the distillery kicking all this stuff out, and I remember the four of us sitting around going, how do we do this? This is crazy. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sure that got that, some heads turning out right. there. Yeah. So that's been a fun one and, and really helped us. Uh, we got a lot of momentum off that. And we're up to, like I said, 13 people this year, which seems that's crazy. crazy. Wow. You've more than tripled. I, I have trouble yeah. keeping names straight at that. <laughs> well, well this, is, this is the fun part for us is getting to know these brands. And, and you guys have such a cool brand and, and really uh, have made a niche for yourself. And you got some great products. We love to drink them. We drink them on Absolutely. the show. We, we had them last week on the show. Yeah. Uh, we, we had the bourbon. Nice. We, we love that. Yeah. What'd you think? That was fantastic. I've had it for the last few years, and I just absolutely love it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, that you get to drink it. One of the favorite things that we get to do is just collaboration. Whether it's events like this where we're coming together and doing something fun or working with breweries around Ohio with, you know, we have used bourbon barrels. You, our gin gets aged in barrels. We have used gin barrels. There may or may not be some used Brandy barrels coming available here Ooh. here soon. Teaser. We're, 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 teaser still, we're still a few years out. Spoiler but, uh, alert. Right. So that kind of collaboration has been really fun. And just watching, and not just on that side, but I feel like we collaborate with these restaurants where they take our stuff and they make amazing cocktails all throughout Ohio, all throughout Cincinnati. It's been really cool to see the cocktails they make with the spirits. Like, I feel like Dave and I know spirits really well. We kick out these products and we get into the restaurants and we're just floored with the, with the what spirits, they're how they're it. put together in a cocktail. That's awesome. Well, what I want to know, and I'm sure we got people in the audience we want to hear from, they probably have questions on, you know, what are, what are these drinks good for? Where are these drinks going to play well uh, in the home, at the bar? We've got uh, Adam walking around the room. He's uh, from Plyman. Sound Images. And uh, so we're going to take some questions from the audience. That's what we can do when we have a live show. We can do this. We can't do this on, no. the, on air. Because no. it's live to tape. I know. But this is live, live, to, live. to tape. Live to, live to tape. So let's see what we got. Who do we got here and what questions do you got? I'm Nicole Gunderman. I'm a founder of the 51%, which is a women in bourbon club here in Cincinnati. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Um, so this is really tasty, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we're going to go out and buy it for uh, holiday gifts for sure. Yes. Um, I actually have a question about your name. So how did you pick the name Watershed Distillery? I almost said my parents picked Greg, but <laughs> Watershed, of course. 
<laughs> so we were, we were really all about celebrating watershed moments. So you think of a watershed moment. For me, it was, um, and it doesn't have to be this big, but leaving my day job and buying a still. At that point, you can't turn back. It's a moment that shapes the path you're taking in life. And so for Dave and I, um, starting this distillery, getting involved in the community, um, we're really about embracing people that embrace those moments. For you guys, starting this bourbon show back in May, yeah, watershed man. moment. Absolutely. You can't go back. You're on the train. You're rolling. Never again. Nope. It, it, I always joke when people come to the distillery, you know, gin drinkers come in and they're like, oh, I like this gin and, and that gin. And so I, I say, well, here's a watershed moment. Try our gin. I, I get a little cheesy with it. Try our gin and you can't go back. Once you have our gin, you'll love it and, uh, and see what you think. So that's really where the name comes from. Watershed moments. Excellent. Fantastic. We've got some other people in the crowd. I Adam, know. Take them out. I know. Are begging to ask a question. Yeah, I came a little bit late, but I'm just wondering where can we get it, or where can we? All right, where can we get this? Question. And, and to our listeners, because we have listeners on filmmakers drinking bourbon in over 45 countries. Some wow. surprising over countries. 1,200 cities. Are okay, so I will be. I will cover all the bases. You got to cover the can bases. I take about an hour and we- just <laughs> spot by spot. No, where I'll, can I'll we get you, this? So. We are based in Ohio. We're based in Columbus, Ohio. And the way the state of Ohio works, there's liquor stores across the state, state state-run agencies, or or at least they own the product in there. And we're in probably two-thirds of those across the state. So if you're in Cincinnati here locally, um, we're in most of the liquor stores down here, especially the downtown ones. um, And we are also in the party source across the river. If you're listening from abroad, we are in seven states in, in the U.S., so we're in Illinois, we're in Kentucky, Ohio, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, and Georgia. And we also sell our product down in Grand Cayman. So if you're listening from the islands, nice. our product wow. is down there. That Cheers to you good. down there. Yeah. I'm Enjoy it on the beach there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in Ohio, we're also in bars and restaurants across the state. So probably on the liquor store side, 300 plus liquor stores and uh, 1,200 bars and restaurants across the state. So, so my question is for our listeners in L.A., a lot of filmmakers out there, what's the plan in the future? Is there a plan the to expand expansion? into the West Coast? You know, we, we're ambitious guys. We, we love the idea of our product being available where people ask for it. But it, what we're seeing this year, we sell a little bit outside the state. The bulk of it's still inside the state of Ohio. It takes a lot of volume and a lot of effort to do that, and we're still a tiny little company. There's 13 of us. So there are some online uh, locations like Benny's out of uh, Illinois, and um, I know there's a few others, and I'm not remembering them in New York, um, but there are a few online places that sell our stuff. Like you can get a, get a bottle here and there. It's not the easiest way, but you can get it. So maybe if all of our listeners in Sheboygan right. speak up. Right. They can maybe get it stopped. But here's the, here's actually the, the best way. The best way is come to Columbus, Ohio, visit the distillery. We love having people come in, visit, buy as much. As, well, you're limited to two bottles per person per day <laughs> if the state's listening. You're limited to two bottles. <laughs> buy two bottles and smuggle them back home. There you go. Do you get a tour when you Wonderful. visit? Wonderful. Yes. Um, we, tours are scheduled. If you want an official tour, schedule them online or give us a call ahead of time and we'll get you set up. Um, but we do a lot of impromptu. Come on back. We'll show you what we're doing. If we have gin rolling off or vodka rolling off the still, we'll bring you back, show you what's nice. up. Nice. Awesome. That's great. What else? We got other people in the room back in yeah. the back. Yeah. So if I go into retail and buy your product or if I go into a restaurant and order it, what do you recommend as far as cocktails outside of being just straight on the rocks or neat? Well, this today, one? with the old-fashioned, it's a cocktail in a bottle. So that's a home run. But I think, and I know where you're going with this question. I guess that was the, the smart-ass answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, um, with, with the old-fashioned, it's probably more of a sell to a lot of retail liquor stores, and you can take it home, enjoy it at home, enjoy it at parties. Um, but what we see, depending on what you buy, so we make vodka, we make gin, we make bourbon. On the gin side, there's an awful lot of uh, classic cocktails made with our gin. So uh, you think of the classics, there's a lot of gin prevalent cocktails there. Um, on the bourbon side, uh, there's still a ton of it that's um, consumed on ice. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to re- re-up him. We yeah, got, sorry, so, so right now, what you, if, if you're listening you're gonna, right now. Right, I'm getting sign language. Like, wait, <laughs> what's going on? If you're listening right now, uh, Kyle, our wonderful designer at uh, Leap Frame. Slash uh, waiter. Slash uh, waiter. Is, is getting us some more old fashions. 
Yes. He's giving me the signal, thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> and I'm like, it's good, it's bad. Like, don't say something else. Like, what? <laughs> so, uh, you know what? I'll take a moment to shout out to Kyle. Yes. Kyle designed a beautiful screen printed poster for this event, which everyone here gets to take one home. If you're it's, listening on the radio, you don't get one. It's based <laughs> off of the old saying, the hair of the dog. And, and uh, it has the ingredients to an old fashioned. A lot of fun. Kyle, nice we, we love you, buddy. Of the bottle. It's great. Yeah. So we're back. We're making drinks in the bar. We're, we're making drinks. If you're going bourbon, I love it on ice. Uh, I love it in a classic cocktail. Um, if you're going with our vodka, our vodka is very versatile. We make it from corn and apples. Um, we have the apples mashed into cider. So it's a combination of uh, apple vodka and corn vodka mixed together. Really clean, drinkable spirit. Um, but it also plays really nicely in a lot of the classic cocktails. Um, and and so, I'll tell you what, today I, I feel like... Um, I can't hold a candle to what people in restaurants around Cincinnati, around Columbus, we go to Chicago and New York, and it's crazy what people are doing with, uh, with cocktails these days. It's a lot of fun to get out there and drink them. Well, it yeah. starts with a good base. It, it so. does. It's, and I always tell people, they ask what I make at home. I'm lazy at home. It's two ingredients. It's like gin and juice at home, grapefruit juice and gin. <laughs> I might get fancy and pour some Fresca in there. Uh, if I really want to get crazy. Ooh, getting, <laughs> do yeah. they um, still make Fresca? They do. They make Fresca wow. just for gin and juice. This that's is all amazing. It's for. You have to guarantee that's how you're using it to this get it out. This is amazing. Excellent. Well, it's, it's anyway. uh, I'll tell you what. These are great questions. A lot going on. I'm going to throw in a little uh, kink in the mix at this point. So one of the things, and, and we're always you, you know Kyle. talking bourbon and filmmaking on the show. Um, and so... We've got, to, we've got to, a few questions. To Cheers mix there. this in, when you're drinking your old fashioned, your watershed pre mixed old fashioned, what are you watching? What's on the tube? What are you kicking back to? There, there is way too much uh, slapstick humor at the distillery. There's a lot of dumb and dumber quoted, a lot of Christmas vacation this time of year. Uh, it's pretty bad. I wish I had more sophisticated movie taste, but that's about it right well, there. Those are classics, classic films. You can't go wrong. Uh, Home Alone's one of my faves. <laughs> I mean, the kids love it. It's great. They, they do. It's so... <laughs> my business partner was watching Home Alone last night with his family. He's got little kids <laughs> in his defense, but it's hilarious you say that. It's awesome. That's good. What is? So we got three questions that we like to ask. Brandon's first was, what are you watching? Next is, what are you working on? Is there anything at Watershed that you So are I alluded to the brand. Yeah. And, and that is probably our biggest project we're working on right now. If you think about it in, in boring business terms, when we want to make a new product like Brandy that has to hang out for two, three years before we sell it, it's a huge commitment on You're our thinking end. thinking far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's barreling in all this money and time into this product. And so we're excited about it. We're still, it won't be in 2016. Maybe in 2017, um, at the end of the year, but we're, we're still a ways away from that. But it's it's exciting, and we love what it's doing in the barrel. That's cool. cool. That's awesome. Do you think that'll expand your 13 into more? I hope we're above that by then. <laughs> I I don't know how we keep up right now. Sometimes awesome. we ask a lot of our employees, and they do a they do a killer job. Well, it's turning out good. So. That's excellent. The other thing we're always looking into is. What are you guys excited about? Is there is there something? Maybe it's an event you guys are you're going to be putting on later in the in the in the new year. Any partnerships? Anything cool? Anything you can tease? Maybe, maybe something it's unrelated. Something you're not allowed to talk about, but right now. But I'm going to just you're going to go do for it. it. You're going to yeah. give us um, the teaser. Yeah. I would go back to our partnerships around um, the city, around the state. I'm very excited about those. I feel like so many uh, breweries are doing exciting things with our barrels. I don't know if anyone's had June from the guys here at Mad Tree in Cincinnati. It's a part of their trunk series. It's a killer beer that they do uh, with our used gin barrels. That's been an exciting one to be a part of. And uh, there's other stuff like that that we work on. The guys at Wolf's Ridge up in Columbus, we're doing some cool aged uh, beers in some of our barrels up there. So that, to me, that's the exciting stuff. Doing that stuff around town uh, has been killer. That's awesome. And we're excited to hear more from the audience. What do you guys have? You want to talk film? You want to talk spirits? You want to talk bourbon? We got a question over there on the uh, left. There we go. Let's get her to You're chime in. Um, hi, I'm Ann. Okay, oh. Speak up. Okay. Uh, so we were noticing the Nokia over there. The Nochino. Okay. It, it's Italian. I'm no not Italian, I, but thanks it, for the That was pretty good, though. Most people. Was it? No, it wasn't. Um, terrible. I thought that you said terrible. Nokia, like Nokia. Bloop, bloop. It's a, it's um, a little want, flip phone. Does anybody? Yeah, I want to ask about the Nutella those. spirit you guys make. I'm kidding. So ab about that delightful. It goes great on toast. It does. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, so about that that really unique spirit. So tell me how to use that when I'm 
home wanting to fix the cocktail. Yeah, really quick, what she's talking about, <clears throat> we make a Nocino, which is a black walnut liqueur. Black walnut liqueur, it has its roots in northern Italy, hence the name. And in Ohio, there are a ton of black walnut trees. If anyone lives in Ohio, you know what I mean. Delicious. Uh, if you're not in Ohio, yeah. we have a lot here. Are the black so, walnuts the green things that fall Yeah, they smell? They're green. Yes, they're okay. green. Those are green. You got to like peel it open. Good, good uh, clarification there. They are green on the tree, but they turn black, hence the name when they fall <laughs> off. So um, what we do to make Nocino, you have to pick these walnuts in late June. There's a certain week of the year you have to pick them. When the walnuts are still small, they haven't formed all the way. So that hard, rock-hard shell on the inside isn't there. You can chop them up by hand. So we pick the green walnut. We, we pick the black walnut when it's green. I should clarify. Okay. This is getting Picking confusing. green black walnuts. <laughs> we chop up the walnut into fours, and we drop it into vodka with some vanilla bean that we chop up, some cloves, some cinnamon, some uh, citrus peel, and all kinds of other secret stuff I can't tell you about. Um, and we put it in there, and we let it sit. It sits for a few months. Uh, we strain all the solids out, and then we add some sugar to it, just a little bit of sugar to, to kind of take that bitterness edge off. And that's what comes out. We actually let it sit for another few months. And then right around the holidays, we just launched this year's batch. And, and you said this is good over creamy it, things. Yeah, right. you were talking about you earlier. Break, you would pour it over ice cream? Ice cream. Right. It's great over ice cream. Yeah. It, you know, with this product, it's, it's kind of a digestive, an after-dinner drink. And it is a little bit sweeter. It's a little bit lower in alcohol content. It tastes really, really rich. It kind of tastes like holiday in a bottle. When you open it up and yeah. taste it, you're like, it tastes like Christmas. That's amazing. Um, but it also plays well in coffee cocktails, um, but pretty much any dessert you can pour this over. You were talking about a nice pairing with your bourbon barrel gin. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. When we first made it, we thought, all right, this will go well with any bourbon cocktail. But where we fell in love with it is with the bourbon barrel gin. It plays so nicely. Um, I know we did a twist on a Negroni the other night with bourbon barrel gin and some of the um, uh, Nocino in place of the sweet vermouth. And it was delicious. But this product, because you can only make it one week of the year, is very rare. There's only a few companies in the U.S. that even try to make it um, because of such the, the tight window that you're making it in. Wow. So it's a, it's a real niche thing. Yes. yes. Decadent. From the audience, might I ask, would it go in a white Russian as like some sort of little additional, Ooh. you know, the dude Taking abides. it to the next level. That, that would be amazing. Abides. That would be amazing. The dude does abide. White Russian would be perfect. Would it be a black Russian at that point? It would be a black Italian. Black Italian. <laughs> is that a thing? Can, it, can we say that? Is yes. That a thing? Yes. All right. You just black made Italian. up a new drink it. called a black made, Italian. Thank you. Thank you, Audit. We made a new drink. <laughs> That's amazing. Excellent. Very That's cool. That's so much fun. Well, I'll tell you what, man. You guys are doing the coolest stuff, and uh, it's a lot of fun to talk about and hear about it. Uh, from the audience, what, what other things are you guys doing these days? I kind of want to know, as a filmmaker, side. We all, yeah. I need to know, what are you guys watching? Okay, we got people here that are yeah. they're into things, TV, films, movies, documentaries. You pour yourself a bottle Get us up fashion. to speed. What, what are, are you, you watching, watching while you're drinking? I just watched The Muppets last night, and the, the dog bartender, Ralph. Ralph, was serving Buffalo Trace to the what? Eagle. Are you yes. serious? Whoa. <laughs> Buffalo Trace. Dude, where, this is Beautiful. amazing stuff. This See, is great Brandon stuff. has a few young children at home. Yeah, he watches this is good. a lot of Muppets and animated stuff. This is, a, this is great. What do we got in the uh, right here? Oh, we got another. I was wondering, uh, have you First, tracked? State your name and where are you from? Bob Schwartz, downtown. There we go. Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> <clears throat> have you tracked all the uh, whiskey that Jessica Jones has been drinking? <laughs> Jessica Jones. Is that the Marvel show, correct? Yeah, it's on okay. uh, Netflix, right? Yeah, I haven't Which seen it. Netflix seen it. is crushing it. I just saw on a blog that that's like one of their top shows. Yeah, it's doing really but well. But wasn't that girl, wasn't she on Breaking Bad? Am I making... The B. Oh, Apartment 21, right? The... She was the girlfriend that threw up and suffocated in Breaking Bad, right? In Breaking Bad. That's what I yes. thought. So she was Jesse's girlfriend. That's what I thought. Anyway, I haven't seen the show, but she's been drinking a lot of whiskey, you say? But okay, we'll have to speak, check it out. Speaking of Breaking Bad, as a distiller, do you <laughs> ever feel like Walter White? You're, do you suit up? Do you have a gas mask? What does it look like when you're in there concocting His these things? His product is so legal, there, Brandon. There is a joke on the tour. If you, if you come in 
on tour, our mill is kind of on lockdown because of all the dust. It really looks like something out of Breaking Bad uh, with all the duct tape holding it together. And so when we walk by there, we joke, that's where we really make our money, in there, in the, uh, <laughs> the math lab. It's is uh, a joke, by the way. It, it is. Yeah, all the yeah, listeners, yeah, they're totally, not making totally nothing. Totally a joke. Totally joke. <laughs> so what else? What, what, else are you, what else are you guys into? What are you listening to, watching? We want to know these things. The guy Kyle. with the beard right there. We've had Kyle on. He, Kyle designed uh, our poster. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. My name is Kyle. And I'm wondering why I've only been on this podcast once. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kyle's uh, a good friend of the show. He's a designer and uh, a connoisseur of bourbon. He actually uh, introduced me to, um, to several new bourbons. He went on a little sojourn earlier in the year via Amtrak. Anyone ride the Amtrak? That's still around? There's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Trains? Trains are still yeah, I'll tell here. you what, you need to go on a train trip. It'll change your life. Uh, he came back a new man. It was a beautiful thing. He went really did. clean face really and came did. back with that big bushy beard, didn't he? So, so here's... Big uh, bushy beard. Big old bushy beard. Another thing that I, that I think is uh, interesting is the, the fact that the bourbon community seems to be just so cool. I mean, we've had so many distilleries on the show. Inclusive is the word Everybody I is... Yeah. is Supporting the vibe, supporting the scene. Talk a little bit about the bourbon community, the spirits community. It is a great community to be a part of, and I don't know if it's because we're we're all drinking booze and we're and we're happy, <laughs> just and, feeling and the along love. and we're feeling the love. Feeling the love. But it has been really fun to be a part of the collaborations that you see in the industry, the help behind the scenes. So we don't necessarily have a product on the market with other distillers in Ohio, but we got together and started a guild, the Ohio Distillers Guild, with the other distilleries here in Ohio. And it's cool, the support, getting everyone together and um, sharing ideas, uh, how we work together with the legal side of it, how we work together with promotion. And I really hope, um, it looks like Columbus, first quarter, we're going to do a cool event with all the distillers coming together. But we really want to come down to Cincinnati and do the same thing. And actually, this might be a great venue to get all the distillers here yes, and please. pull some people in and, and do something fun. That's great. So yeah. as, as far as people interested in what you guys are doing, where can we find you? When, when we link, we'll link out to you, where can we find all about Watershed, what you guys are doing, what you're up to? Yeah, the best way is probably go, to go to watersheddistillery.com. Visit our website. You can sign up for our email uh, updates. And that's the best way. We let our email list know first of what we're doing. Um, but also social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. It's a great way to know what we're doing in the moment. Um, but big events and big announcements, uh, emails usually first. Very cool. That's great. So they can find out about events like tonight Absolutely. that are happening in different cities, different places, Columbus, throughout Ohio, maybe even New York, maybe even. Or Grand Cayman. Or, yeah, Who Grand knows? Cayman. Or Grand Cayman. Uh, right. Log on to there. If you want to find out the information, you can always go to www.fdbpodcast.com. Dot com. We're going to throw all the links up there and you'll be able to find out about Watershed. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, we're available on iTunes. We are. We, I don't know if you know this, Greg. We're tell the, me. Tell me more. We're the number one. Not number two. Bourbon, bourbon podcast. Yeah. That's awesome. So Congratulations, you guys, guys. Make bourbon. We just made it. We just made it on you the number one it. bourbon podcast. There you go. That's so, awesome. Uh, you guys, you guys are bourbon. awesome. This has been a lot of we're fun tonight. Yeah, it's just, been a lot of fun. Talking. Have you guys had a good time out there? Well, we appreciate it. And uh, I'll tell you what. We're, we got some more drinking to do. So uh, We do. We, we'd like to say to everyone here tonight at the event for the Watershed Old Fashioned Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon Launch Event. Yes. Thank you for coming Cheers. out. Cheers. And Cheers. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.